is um, Yurka Kadanik. I'm the uh, Chief Technology Officer um, with uh, Public Works Government Services Canada. And uh, today I'll be uh, presenting the Cloud Slam, um, the, the roadmap to cloud computing for the Government of Canada. So thank you very much for having me today. I uh, really appreciate um, uh, being here. So a, I will be driving the, um, the presentation and um, I'll walk you through it. So our agenda for today, we get 45 minutes. Um, I want to give you a little bit of background on, on the Government of Canada's IT Shared Services Program and where we're at. Um, also go over as to how we are actually structured to govern ourselves because uh, this is a, a government-wide um, initiative. So we are comprised of um, about 140 departments and agencies in the Government of Canada. Uh, then I'll lead that into um, our cloud concepts and uh, what we've accomplished as far as uh, uh, the framework and the definitions and our next steps. Um, present as well the, um, the vision and um, the plan and uh, find the accomplishments uh, today. So today I have um, with me as well uh, two of my uh, senior advisors, uh, Eric Depre, who is my senior architect for telecom, and then Murphy, who is my senior advisor for uh, business strategy um, on cloud computing. So uh, just to give you a little bit of background on um, moving towards shared services, what kind of an environment that we have, um, we're comp we have about 315,000 desktops that operate. Um, last inventory, we have um, 144 data centers nationally uh, that we know of, and um, in there we are currently hosting 120,000 uh, Wintel and Unix servers. Um, we have seven financial management systems, uh, 124 private clouds, or if we prefer separate network infrastructures, and 15 instances of SAP and uh, PeopleSoft. Now, when I say we, I'm talking about the government of Canada at large, and, and uh, our mandate um, in Public Works Government Services Canada is we are the uh, single department that has uh, legislation to provide common services to other departments and agencies. We are an optional service provider, so we need to earn our uh, living every single day. Um, we focus primarily in, uh, as a department, um, one of our lines of business is to manage the real estate for the Government of Canada. The second one is to um, and manage the uh, the acquisition, so that's the acquisitions branch. The third one is the our banker, payroll, pension, so really receiver general function of Canada. Uh, fourth line of business for translation, translation bureau, a deal in, uh, in 57 languages, two official lang languages in Canada being English and French. And then, uh, of course, IT Shared Services, which is us. And in the five domains of IT, we uh, are active in four, which are infrastructure-based, being uh, desktop computing, uh, telecommunications, which is voice and data, data center services, and IT security. From a uh, budget or expenditure perspective, uh, the pie chart that you see in front of you, um, total expenditure roughly around $5 billion. And the um, um, division, if you want, of expenditures by key elements are on this pie chart. So you see the telecom uh, being at $780 million a year. These are all ongoing numbers. Um, data center, uh, which is in red, a little over a billion. Uh, desktop, $1.5 billion roughly. Security and architecture, about $120 million. And then program applications, which are business-specific applications, um, $1.1 and Common administrative system being uh, the ERP side for 350. On the next slide, it gives a little bit of um, background about um, um, our um, IT practitioners, if you want. So our, our IT practitioner um, base across the whole of Government of Canada is about 17,000 uh, strong. Um, we've seen an average um, uh, employee annual growth of about 7% since 1999 and the labor cost of total IT services increasing by over 10% annually. Um, approximately 30% of our um, staff are located in regions outside of the national capital area being Ottawa here in Canada. And um, the um, number of employees that are served by this is about 284,000, which excludes our military. Okay? 
Now I need to point out as well um, a key element as to what gave a little bit of impetus on shared services, and that's the fact that uh, roughly 43% of these 7,000 uh, employees uh, will become eligible to retirement in the next four to five years. The next slide uh, really deals about governance. So one of the first things that we did, uh, we first um, decided to organize ourselves and have a strong governing body to be able to uh, decide on, on the roadmap and the way forward uh, for IT. So the slide you see in front of you to the extreme left, uh, it's the enterprise governance, as we call it. So Treasury Board Secretariat is our main policy uh, body. And uh, we have one federal CIO, uh, Karin Charet, and she heads that group. So they are responsible for policy and directives of IT. There are um, uh, three main councils, if you want, that report or advise her. And CIMB, or CIMB as we call it, is the Committee on Information Management for Business. So this is primarily made up of uh, information management um, business people, not necessarily IT. So it really is the demand side of governance for the Government of Canada. The next one, CIO Council, there are approximately um, 50 members of the CIO Council, and those 50 members represent the uh, medium to larger uh, departments and agencies in the Government of Canada, and there's also a seat there from the president of the next committee below, which is the head of, head of IT for small uh, departments and agencies, which has its own governing body, but the president of that one sits also on a CIO council. The um, piece in the middle is the shared services governing body, and the shared services governing, governing body you see from the extreme right, there are subject matter expert working groups that are aligned to um, provide um, uh, key input, if you want, to advisory panels. And we have